Hi everyone, so my name is Jensen Casey and I am owner of Baby Ohi Consulting and today we are going to talk about how to talk about sleep with your spouse um, or your partner. Of course my dog chooses to stop barking now. <laughs> um, so this is a really important topic because sleep can be hard and feel so deeply personal if you are not getting enough sleep. You can feel like why is my baby not sleeping? It's like something that you're doing wrong, something that they're doing wrong. Um, it, it starts to really kind of build some resentment towards maybe your child, towards your partner. So I'm going to talk about some questions that you can use to help just spark that conversation so you and your partner can kind of start to be on the same page about sleep and so that you're feeling supported around sleep. Because again, you have to sleep. It's not something that you can just put off. Um, so really having these questions and having a deep understanding of what's happening with everyone is going to make this so much better, this season of life so much better, because it won't last forever. But when you're in it, it feels like there's no way out. So really just having someone on board and understanding what you need um, is going to just help you both get on the same page so that you can get the sleep that you need. So one of the first questions is, um, what, where will you sleep? What will the sleeping arrangements look like? So before you even have a baby, there's some, there's questions that I'll go over that you want to talk about before you have your baby. And there's going to be questions that you're going to revisit after your baby arrives or if you already have a child. So the first thing is where's everyone going to sleep? Um, some parents decide, yep, the baby is going to sleep in our room in a bassinet and we're both going to sleep in our bed. Maybe one partner has to go back to work right away and they need their sleep to be able to get through a long work day. So they know, okay, baby and one parent are gonna sleep in one room and I'm gonna sleep in a different room. So really just being upfront and honest at the beginning of what the sleep situation will look like and what will work best for you. Um, have a conversation either before baby arrives or as this may come up, um, if your baby will not sleep on the bassinet, what are your feelings about co-sleeping? Um, I can definitely provide some resources about sleep co-sleeping options, even though as a sleep consultant, I really truly believe that baby having their own sleep space is so super important for their safety. Um, but really talking to each other about what, what are your feelings around that? Is this something that I may consider, um, is this something that we are having to do and I never wanted to do, um, but we're doing it so I can get by, but it's really not feeling right to me. So definitely talk about um, co-sleeping just because that could be an option that has to come up into you, in your family. Um, talk about how you function on small, function on small amounts of sleep. This is the biggest, biggest one. Um, that if you are listening to this before you have your baby, definitely talk about this with your partner. Um, I know for myself, I do not go. <laughs> I cannot run on small amounts of sleep. I know that I need a full, like, typically I'm closer to a 10 hour a night person. Um, I have at least a solid eight hours to be able to do anything, to be a functioning adult in any sense of the word. Um, my husband is kind of pretty much the same way. He probably needs, um, it, it, it may not be the amount of sleep that he gets, but it's the quality of the sleep that he gets. So maybe he gets a little bit less um, hours wise, but he needs it to be really nice, deep, restful sleep. Um, so really just talking about how do we do on small amounts of sleep? If you know yourself and you know, hmm, I really, I can't do it. I really do need to prioritize my sleep. Let that be known to your partner. Um, if you know, yeah, you know, I maybe used to work overnights or maybe I didn't, I do work nights. Um, and I can like adjust my schedule or I'm a night owl and I love to stay up really late. Talk about that. What is that going to look like for your family? Maybe you can do shifts. If your partner likes to go to bed early, they go to bed early and you watch the baby until a certain time and then they can wake up and then you get a turn to sleep. Um, it really just having a plan in place of if our baby is not an amazing sleeper and we need a plan B, what will that plan B be? Plan A would be your baby is a wonderful sleeper and you just put them in the bassinet and they sleep, you know, hours at a time, they wake up, they feed, they go right back to sleep. But if that is not happening, you also do need to have a plan of what that will look like. Because again, if you don't and one partner ends up doing most of the work or most of the waking, 
and they are not able to sustain their lives on a little amount of sleep, that's going to build up some serious resentment. Um, talk about what are your priorities for overnight? Um, what are your feelings about sleep training? Do you want to have a child that sleeps through the night, that kind of can reach their sleep potential and sleep for longer stretches? Um, do you like middle of the night meetings? Is that a time when it's calm and quiet and dark and it's just you and your baby, it feels like, in, in the rest of the world? Um, if that's a time that you enjoy, then know, like, maybe my priority isn't to um, do any sleep training and just let them naturally do what they do because I can get by on little amounts of sleep or I am able to nap when they nap during the day, whatever it may be. Or you may be on the other side where, yes, I have a pretty, you know, high demand job, high stress job. I'll have to return back to work earlier than I would like to. So I will need sleep to be able to sustain me through an eight, 10, 12 hour shift. Um, so really kind of knowing beforehand, ideally, but in the moment now, um, what your priorities are for overnight sleep. What ideally do you want that night to look like? Um, talking about just expectations too. That's, that's a really big thing. If both parties aren't on the same page with that, um, maybe your partner thinks a newborn, they've heard that newborn sleeps 16 to 18 hours and they're thinking, wonderful, that will be eight hours straight <laughs> overnight. And that's definitely not the way it works. So just knowing what are the expectations for our child's age is going to be really helpful too, because then it won't feel so hard if you're waking up overnight, if you know this is typically what two month olds do. Um, but if you kind of had a different vision of it in your mind, then it is going to feel a lot harder. So really just getting clear on what the expectations are, educating yourself about sleep norms for your child's age will make that process feel a bit easier. So if you have any other questions or um, have a question that you and your partner have talked about that has really helped with your sleep, please pop them in the comments. I always love to hear from everyone. 